Chess friends, I hope you are doing well, today I have a very intriguing and brilliant chess game where I played the King's Gambit against the Torch chess engine, which is the number 2 chess engine in the world, I will teach you the opening strategies and tactics employed in this game, so, let's start the game without further delay, I began with e4 and after e5, I initiated the King's Gambit by playing f4, the King's Gambit, akin to the Vienna Gambit, involves the strategy of playing knight f3 knight c3, and bringing out the bishop to c4 to control the diagonal, later, you can castle and involve your rook on f5, from black's perspective, he can play bishop c5, knight f6 knight c6 or d6, he can also eventually capture the pawn on f4. Let me show you the variation that will occur if he dares to play bishop c5, consequently, bring out your knight to f3, threatening to play bishop c4, and after d6 c3, preparing to strike in the center with d4, black might be tempted to play queen e7, indirectly attacking the pawn on e4, then, you can strike by playing d4, and after the capture and recapture, the e4 pawn becomes vulnerable, black can easily capture it, and at this juncture, don't block the check by moving your bishop or queen. Just slide your king to the f2 square because this d4 pawn is well protected, and your bishop is under attack, if you move your bishop, your position will be a dead loss, I can deliver a check by playing bishop e5, and regardless of your move, rook e1 can come and pin your queen to the king, and the game will be over for you. Going back to the position, we see that bishop to c5 is a very vulnerable move, eventually, bringing out the knights is also a trap. I made a particular video about the king's gambit, which you can check out after watching this video, I will put the link in the description. In our actual game, torch captured the pawn on f4, and after knight f3, black here can go with d6 or knight c6, but torch decided to play more aggressively with g5, supporting the pawn, so, I tried to break his structure and his ego by playing h4, Playing h6 or f6 would create a much more problematic situation for him, for instance, if he plays f6 to protect his structure, I can scramble it by capturing the pawn on g5 and then attacking by playing queen h5 check, forcing the king to move. Then after queen takes g5, it will attack the king, and blocking with the knight on f6 would create a problematic situation after I play e5, I will regain my material which is why some of you might consider playing king to e8, but it is a completely rubbish move. I can play queen to h5 check, forcing the king to move again. Without a pawn on g5, I can easily march my queen to e5, checking the king and simultaneously attacking the rook on h8, causing you to lose material, that's my strategy. So, going back to the position, we saw that playing f6 is a very bad move which is why Torch decided to go with g4, forcing the knight to move, as the knight reaches e5, you can see that it creates pressure on these two pawns. By playing d4, it will attack the pawn, and simultaneously bishop c4 can arrive, after d4, to stabilize the position, black might be tempted to consider d6, knight c6, or bishop to g7, Torch decided to go with knight c6, I mean, in this position, I am pressuring the pawn on g4, but he played knight c6 to put pressure on my knight, after I played knight c3, some of you might be tempted to kick out the knight by playing d6 or bishop g7, however. Playing bishop g7 is a very vulnerable move because I can play the stunning and brilliant move, knight to d5, you can see that these two knights, protected by the pawns, create a problematic and destructive situation on the king side and cause paralyzation in the center. That's why after the queen moves back to d8 to protect the pawn, I can easily capture the pawn on g4, putting pressure on the bishop on g7. Some may think of capturing the knight on e5, but after capturing and recapturing, I can play the stunning move, queen to g7, putting pressure on the rook and the knight simultaneously. Returning to the position, some may argue for king f8 to protect the bishop, but I can easily sacrifice my knight on f7, trapping the queen and rook. After the capture and queen takes f4, knight blocks, and then comes the aggressive move bishop c4, putting pressure on the king through this diagonal, e5 will ruin your knight position, and this position is completely lost for you, for instance, if you dare to move your king back to e8, 
I can easily castle, putting pressure on the knight. As the rook moves, queen g5 will arrive to pin down the knight and simultaneously attack the bishop on g7, the king's position is harassing, even if you safeguard your bishop, I can play e5, kicking out the knight, something like knight takes d5, queen check, king moves up, followed by bishop g5 check, knight blocks on f6, and I can easily capture on f6, you can see that your king is completely paralyzed and unable to move, creating a very problematic and vulnerable situation for you. The game will be over for you. So, let's share a beautiful quote with you. Every struggle in your life has shaped you into the person you are today, be thankful for the hard times, they can only make you stronger. Returning to the variations, we saw that bishop to g7 is not viable to attack the knight, Torch decided to play more authentically and tried to hold the game with knight to f6, I captured the pawn, and after d6 occurs to kick out the knight, instead of moving back the knight or capturing the knight on c6, I played the incredible move bishop to g5, this is a crucial and aggressive move that applies pressure on the knight on f6. It sacrifices the knight but promises to exert more pressure in the center with knight to d5, regardless of where the queen moves, knight takes f6 will come, forcing the king to move, the king has only these two dark squares to go, but it will be trapped by the bishop, for instance, if king d8 happens, I can easily check you by capturing the pawn on e5, forcing the king to move again, then knight to d5 check, followed by king e8, knight takes c7 will fork your king and queen, causing you to lose your queen. The game is completely favorable for me. Going back to the position, we saw that bishop to g5 was a very standard and dynamic move to win the queen. Instead, I decided to play more brilliantly by capturing the knight on c6 and then going with queen to d3, protecting the center and preparing to castle long, we have h6 to protect the g5 square, so after h5, the knight moves to d5 to exert pressure on the knight and bishop, because the pawn on e4 is pinned, we have another exchange on d5 and long castling. Noticing that the rook can come to e1 to exert pressure on this file, he captured the pawn, and after I gave him a check, the bishop came, and the queen went to b7 to exert more pressure on the queen side and the rook, rook e1 may come to attack the pawn, after two moves, you can see that the king's position is just a hodgepodge of defensive moves, all the pieces are surrounding the king, trying to protect the position, I mean, torch's position is like a turtle in defensive mode. It exerts pressure on the d6 pawn, which is why the bishop cannot move, allowing the king to castle safely, the bishop also cannot move because bishop e5 check can ruin your position, so the bishop has to stay there, pretending to be an umbrella for the king, after queen e6 attacks the pawn on a2, and he wants to play a short side castle, I capture the pawn, protecting a2, this creates two connected passed pawns on the queen side, which is very good for me, after a couple of moves. We have g3 to protect the bishop's position. You have two split pawns, which can be attacked and targeted by my pieces. After bishop g5 queen e3, and rook d4 happen to attack the pawn on e4, we have rook a8 followed by a3, king b1 and bishop exchanges on a4, when the queen moves, the bishop comes in, and the pawn on g4 is under pressure from the bishop. The rook can also come to increase the pressure against the pawn. After a couple of moves, we have rook before to go to b7 to gain access to the seventh rank, which is why he decided to play f5 to stabilize the structure. However, after queen d4, it creates much pressure and a problematic situation on the king side because your pawns are overcommitted and have potential weaknesses, after the rook moves and rook exchanges occur on b7, I push the pawn on a4, I want to push my two connected passed pawns, which I actually accomplish in the game. So, let me inspire you by making a beautiful quote. Rest but never quit, even the sun has a sinking spell each evening, but it always rises the next morning, at sunrise, every soul is born again. After rook a1 to energize the pawn move with the potential threat of moving the b pawn with support from the bishop and the queen, we have rook a5 followed by queen e7 rook c1 and c4, I want to play king a3 followed by bishop 
d1 to overprotect the pawn on a4 and push the pawn on b4. I aim to push my passed pawns to promote them and checkmate him as soon as possible, bishop d1 follows in the game, and after the rook moves and the pawn reaches c5, it exerts pressure because I want to get two connected passed pawns in the center. He doesn't like my idea and brings out his queen to h4 to attack the pawn and push his pawns on the kingside, but my pawns are faster than his, like a bullet train, they reach c6 to attack the bishop, moving the bishop back is just a cowardly move because queen e3 can come to protect the pawn, and you can see that three connected passed pawns are like a beast, like a T-Rex that can destroy your position completely, moves like g2b5, king e7 queen g4, b6 queen f3, and queen exchanges occur. b7 and f2 show that both pawns are reaching the first rank to become queens, but I promote to a queen before he can, and after a couple of moves, queen e3 will come to exert more pressure on the bishop and protect the rook, simultaneously, it also protects the g1 square from the pawn being promoted. You have to promote to another queen, and then I can easily capture it. With extra material, I will win the endgame very soon. But this position is just winnable for me. Returning to the position, we saw that moving the bishop back is a cowardly move, which Torch actually did, he effectively captured the pawn on e4, putting pressure on the rook and wanting to push forward his g-pawn. After a couple of moves, we have g2 followed by rook d8. The g1 square is well protected by the queen, which is why I decided to go with b5, a few moves later, he picked up the pawn, and b6 and queen c6 followed in the game, I captured the pawn on d6, and you can see that with the three connected passed pawns, I am completely winning the game, and my king's position is well secured, after the queen check and a few moves later, we have queen f3 followed by queen to c5 in the game, queen c5 was played to protect the g1 square. Preventing black from promoting his pawn to a new queen, after d6 and queen c3, followed by queen to g3 and rook to d1, the game continued. To energize the pawn to become a queen, we had queen exchanges on the g1 square, with extra pawns and material, I was completely winning the game. Then, rook f1 followed by a7 and a rook capture happened on b3, leading to a checkmate on the h2 square by the rook, what an incredible and brilliant game it was, I hope you enjoyed it very much, if so, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best, bye bye, see ya.